All right, so we're continuing our journey towards a better understanding of the base 12 version of pi. And what I've been doing in the videos before this one is showing you or introducing you to this diagram here, this diagram for 360 degrees, the diagram that generates all those degrees. You can see it's a series of rings and each ring builds on the degree sections that were coming before. And so on the 30th ring, we have a circle that has been divided into 360 equal parts. So this is the geometry for 360 degrees. It only exists in base 12. You're not gonna find it in base 10. It simply doesn't exist. But the big question I'm getting from everybody is, well, what is the base 12 version of pi? You know, we've been creating this diagram and in the process of creating this diagram, we are actually taking units of the degrees of the diameter and putting them into the circumference of the circle. We're building a circle. We started with a very sort of small clunky circle. We're using the geometry of the dodecagon. This is a new geometric pattern that again only works in base 12. So I've explained to you in past videos what the difference between base 10 and base 12 is. Whatever platform you're watching this video on, you can find previous videos that explain the difference between base 10 and base 12, introduce you to the geometry of the dodecagon. So here we are, we're in the middle of going through all the rings of this 360 degree diagram. I think it's time just to simply do the equation. We're gonna take the value of the diameter of, the, of this dodecagon and we're gonna divide it into, you could either say it's the perimeter of the dodecagon or the circumference of the circle. Either way, it's the same length. That's what's great about this particular geometry is that we have the circumference of the circle already. It's, a, it's an assumption that you can't actually calculate pi using an equation of dividing the diameter into the circumference because we never know what the circumference is. It's a very difficult thing to work out in base 10. So let's do the equation. We're gonna go to the very first ring of the dodecagon and use those numbers. Although really any combination of diameter and circumference is gonna generate the same thing because we know pi is a ratio. So the circumference divided by the diameter. So in this example, we're gonna use 1.7 root two. Again, we're working in units of the square root of two. 1.7 root two is gonna be the diameter. The circumference is five root two. So when we convert those numbers to their square root versions, we'll do it as one square root divided into another square root. 1.7 squared is 2.61. Multiply that by the square root of two, we get 5.02. And then one point, uh, and then, sorry, the five squared, doing it all in my head here, is uh, 21. So 21 times square root of two is 42. So we're doing 5.02, square root of 5.02 into the square root of 42. So we have to swing our decimal places over, and it's 502 into 4200. And the answer is going to be a square root. So what does it work out to? Well, we can look at it right here. Again, simple long division starts off with the 9. Again, square root of 9, you know, 3 squared is 9. It's a good start. 9 point B8. So a B, what's a B? Well, we're counting in base 12. So when we base 12, we've got extra numerals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, 10. So there's going to be A's and B's within the overall number. So then what happens? 9.B801. 71191. I'm just going to get out of the way.